So here we are with our um, oops, uh, radio wave spectrum again. And I'm just going to go over this in a little more detail. So it says almost every wireless technology from cell phones to garage door openers use radio waves to communicate. <clears throat> TV and radio broadcast have exclusive use of their frequency within a geographic era, area. Many devices share frequencies which can cause interference. These are radio waves used by everyday devices. <clears throat> and um, so this top one here shows uh, kilohertzes, megahertzes, and then gigahertzes. And uh, the hertz is one cycle per second. And the cycle is the distance from wave crest to wave crest. And so kilohertz is a thousand hertzes. <clears throat> a megahertz is a million and a gigahertz is a billion. Uh, okay, so um, broadcast TV that we used to get with an antenna uses these really low ones on the left there, as does AM radio. Okay, then you got remote controlled toys, then you have broadcast U UHF channels, uh, and then you have cell phones. And then GPS systems, okay? And notice this is called the permeable zone, which means that um, these waves can actually uh, penetrate. Whoops. It's my ex-wife. Hang on, everybody. Susan, I, hang on. I'm recording my class. Let me stop the class here. For, okay, back on board here. Um, all right, and then you see moving over, we've got a semi-permeable zone, which is difficult for signals to penetrate dense objects, and then line of sight zones, like highway toll tags and police radar, where um, trees and things can block the waves. And of course, by the way, um, light waves also, right, aren't so good at penetrating uh, solid objects, <laughs> at least as far as I know, unless you're, uh, you know, Superman and have x-ray vision or whatever it is. Um, okay, so, um, all right, so you'll see where cell phones are on here. If you look back to the top again, that cell phones are in two areas. One is below one gigahertz and one is a little below two gigahertz. And, um, what's going to happen with, um, whoop, come on, puppy. What's going to happen with, uh, Oh, there you are. 5G is, um, and the radio waves. Obviously, it's the next big thing. And 5G stands for, doesn't stand for gigahertz. It stands for the fifth generation of kind of cell phone, mobile phone technology. It's going to have different band speeds, folks. Um, it's going to allow, as I'm sure you've heard, um, even faster downloading of complicated content like movies and things, which are already not too bad, but it'll be even faster. Um, so more content, more bits can be sent um, per second. Um, it also will allow for um, more, um, when you think about robots and things doing um, manufacturing, um, more and more um, content will be able to be sent to those sorts of facilities. And evidently, it will also be good for driverless cars, um, which I guess require lots of complicated instructions to be sent. Um, now, some parts of this wireless uh, 5G will be... Um, almost semi-permeable, so there'll be more difficulty in some cases getting signals in buildings. So that's one issue. And also, evidently, these waves are shorter and they will not be able to travel as long a distance. So you're going to have more boosting um, devices set up around neighborhoods. Um, so this is one big part of the um, configuration, you know, and the capital investment that's required to do these uh, 5G networks. Um, oh, let's see now. Uh, what else did I want to say about that? Um, yeah, I think that's uh, 
Well, okay. Uh, I, I think that's about it for now. Oh, uh, it will allow the operation of more phones in a confined area at the same time. Um, this is one of the reasons, by the way, that in a in the event of a catastrophic occurrence, God forbid, um, you know, even a blackout, um, you find cell phones aren't functional, particularly in cities, you know, where there's a dense population, because when everyone tries to get on the network, the network is overwhelmed. And this is why, one of the reasons why I always carry with me a battery-powered little tiny transistor radio. I can't talk to anybody on it, but I can at least get the news and what's happening. These, these are recommended for most survival kits, everyone. So, mobile advertising agenda. A little, that's uh, not much history here. You know, it's not that, been around that long. Um, some trends, uh, discuss some of the players. Not too much to say about players, though. It's mostly the mobile phone companies. But a fair amount of discussion about mobile advertising and the device itself and uh, some of the constraints it has and some of the amazing things it allows and strengths and weaknesses and, uh, and uh, etc. Okay, well, of course, there's an explosive growth rate. You see the level of penetration that mobile phones have and now that smartphones have in the U.S. and it's very high across the world. Also, in fact, in many countries, uh, they have much more mobile penetration to the, than they do landline penetration. They kind of jumped over, you know, crummy landline services to mobile services that are pretty good. Uh, but really, this, this amazing device puts the Internet in our hands, uh, almost in our heads, uh, constantly. It's the way we access information. And we check our mobile devices a couple hundred times a day, most of us. Uh, and you'll recall just kind of setting it all in perspective. Uh, this goes way back in the media lectures for when we talked about kind of overall trends in media in the U.S. The move from non-digital to digital, um, you know, old style media, radio and TV and newspaper printed media out of home. Each one is moving into some kind of digital format. Um, I guess we could say uh, same thing for telemarketing, going from old-fashioned landline telephones to voice over Internet protocol. Same thing. We see uh, an amazing amount of fragmentation in audiences for the broadcast media uh, with cable TV and uh, Internet TV and so many choices. Uh, so many streaming services now for entertainment. Um, so uh, appointment viewing is clustered about big events, which tend to be sports events like the Super Bowl, like the Olympics worldwide. Olympics is worldwide. Number one program, with three or four billion viewers whenever we have it, which hopefully will be 2000. I think they said 21, didn't they? Uh, different media to match different backgrounds, different hobbies. So uh, that's another trend. And uh, then the trend in terms of Internet advertising from moving from more or less stationary devices in your home to, well, tablets, which I guess are having a bit of a resurgence now, but mostly in people's homes from what I read. But uh, it looked like tablets were sort of being eclipsed by, you know, who needs it? I've got a pretty big phone and I've got a, Laptop or desktop, why do I need a tablet? But anyway, the main players, though, are still desktop and now, of course, mobile. Um, and uh, another kind of look at perspective, because we're now at the end of our lectures about media types. Um, the last one we're talking about is the most recent, which is mobile. But um, when we look at history of media in the U.S., you'll recall over this term, we Kind of went chronologically in terms of what were the dominant media at the time from news from out of home to then newspapers and bigger and bigger newspapers and magazines and color magazines and then we got uh, electronic uh, 
with radio, radio being commercialized, with advertising supported uh, programming and networks and local stations and radio being superseded and literally replaced by television, uh, radio going into cars and transistor radios and becoming very music based and very local and television becoming the dominant media, the king of media. I think we said uh, for uh, after World War II, right up until pretty recently, maybe 10, five, 10 years ago, television was, was the king. The best impression, uh, and by that I don't mean, uh, you know, dress nicely and make a good first impression. I'm talking about media slash advertising impressions, which is one person seeing one ad how many times? One time. Uh, television with color, motion, sound, uh, most persuasive uh, medium. Then uh, internet. And you know what? I'm going to, you know me, I love changing things on the fly just to show what we're capable of around here. Let's see here, folks. All right, here we go text box let's put in yes telemarketing you are here you are here and you know what maybe you're not quite as important as these other guys but I don't want you to feel uh, inferior so let's get you in here by gosh and let's even let's make it dramatic and have you float in Okay. Okay. Because, you know, this is the first year I lectured on telemarketing. Um, and then the Internet. Um, and then with these amazing devices, becoming smartphones and becoming really full computers. Uh, soon on 5G networks, in some cases already in 5G networks. Mobile. The mobile phone, which... Is its own unique device and uh, for internet advertising. First device is 1983, folks. First SMS, 1992. Uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, Apple. 62.6 uh, .6 million in the U.S. 183 million in 2015, and you saw what the penetration was uh, more recently in some earlier slides. So it really has uh, taken over the country pretty quickly. Uh, faster than there was a TV in every home, there was a mobile phone and a uh, smartphone in every home, almost every home. Except downscale, uneducated, rural, not quite so many there. Well, the iPhones or Androids? And there's a little bit of difference in, in demographics with iPhone. iPhone tends to be younger, maybe a bit more educated and upscale versus Android in the U.S., that is. Okay, and so, um, again, looking at uh, worldwide, this is 2020. Um, here's the whole population of the world, 7.75 billion. There's unique mobile phone users, 5.19 billion. So 67% of the world's population has a mobile phone, more than penetration of the Internet. And uh, there's where social media is. And you remember uh, social media, China has its own version of it. Uh, but media types like uh, Facebook, have really uh, penetrated a number of other countries. For instance, as we said, it's very, very big in India, uh, for example. Um, okay. And now we turn to advertising. I'm going to stop here, and then we'll get into formats and advertising growth and mobile. And you know that it is the fastest growing of all of our media uh, in terms of ad dollars.